It's an age-old story, the story of a father's trial and temptation, a story that goes back to biblical times. This is the way it could happen in the world of today. Listen to The Sacrifice on Theater 5. <laughs> Yes, Miss Randall? Mr. Terrison is here now, Mr. Hay. Two minutes late. Send him in. Yes, sir. Hold all calls. No interruptions. Yes, sir. Morning, Mr. Hay. Come in, Abby. Shut the door carefully. Sorry, I'm late. Switching trouble on the Detroit-Pittsburgh-Boston telephone conference. Well, I suppose these things happen. Sit down, Terrison. Thank you. Now, first, your division reports have been audited. Good profit ratio. We run a tight operation. I believe it's the best in the entire L.O. Hay Corporation. Let me say that. Second, we're in trouble in the construction division. This is strictly confidential. Well, I've heard no rumors, Mr. Hay. I've seen to that. Strict security. Now, here's the problem. The Red Rapids atomic installation. We're experiencing radiation leakage. We have 32 million tied up there, and if we don't make it good, we'll be in trouble. I sent three men, supposed experts down there, caught blanche to do anything. No results. Except that all three received radiation burns, which will probably be fatal. When that happens, everything is going to fall on our head. The newspapers, AEC, and Congress. Terrison, this problem has to be cracked. Or the L.O. Hay Corporation is going to take such a beating we may never recover. Anything I can do, L.O., I'll be glad to. I'll go down and make a report. No reports. I'm... I'm fed up on reports. I need action. Someone has to dig in there and find the source of the trouble, even if it kills him. Well, I'm volunteering, Mr. Hay. I can't do more. This needs an expert, not an executive. The man I want for this job is your son. Ira? Yes. I've asked around discreetly. People who know tell me that Ira Terrison is the coming man in the field of atomic energy. Oh, but he... To be 24 years of age and have such a reputation is fantastic. I'm counting on him to pull us out of this mess quickly and quietly. But Ira is involved in this research project at the university. That can wait. He... We can. Abby, you get hold of Ira. Tell him to report to my office at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Considering the high risks, we'll pay whatever. But he's got to be here. Mr. Hay, I offered my life, but I have no right to sacrifice my sons for the Yellow Hay Corporation. Ira's not an employee. He's my son. I'm surprised that you asked me. I'm not asking you, Abby. I'm telling you. All your life, you've been supported by the Yellow Hay Corporation. You were a green college kid when you came here. You've enjoyed security, advancement, and power. And your son, you got a raise the day he was born. Company scholarships took him through school. Am I exaggerating? No, sir, but... Now, for the first time, the L.O. Hay Corporation is asking you for something. And you turn me down. Your attitude disappoints me, Abby. I want Ira to go to Red Rapids, and I don't want any argument. Is that all, Mr. Hay? Eight o'clock tomorrow morning in my office. <laughs> Abby, for Pete's sake, drink your martini and stop worrying. Well, it's the first time I've crossed up the old man since I joined the L.O. Hay Corporation. Twenty-six years, Sally. Well, better late than never. Oh, Sally, be serious. I'm serious about my son's life. Who does Lawrence Oswald Hay think he is demanding Ira's services? Ira is perfectly happy at the university. Why should he work for L.O. Hay? Oh, now, wait a minute. He'd be paid. And paid more in a month than he makes in a year. Ira's life isn't for sale. Even if yours is. Oh, now, Sally, let's not start that. Why huh? not? For 26 years, you have lived, breathed, worked, slept, eaten as a company man. You've been afraid to have a thought that wasn't approved by L.O. Hay. All right. You have no friends who aren't useful to the corporation. You expect me to associate only with the wives of the other vice presidents, to belong to the same country club and the same political party. Now, I have tried to go along with all of... You've been very helpful to me, Sally. I appreciate it. But I won't let you put Ira in the same trap. If he should get out of Red Rapids alive. Ira hates the corporation, and I don't blame him. Well, he has no reason to. Of course he has. It took his father from him. 
and gave him a company vice president instead. Why should Ira risk his life to make profits for L.O. Hay? Not for Hay. For me. For us. The old man isn't used to anyone saying no. Well, what can he do to you? Fire you? It'd be the best thing that ever happened to you. Oh, you're being childish. What about my pension rights? My stock options? If I get fired, I lose everything. You lost everything years ago, Oh, Eddie. I don't know. We've had a pretty good life with the corporation all these years, Sally. Where would we have been without L.O. Hay? If Hay asked for something, perhaps we owe it to him. We can't refuse. We can and will. Sally. Promise me you won't give Ira to him. I can't promise. You must. It's too dangerous. Ira will know how to take care of himself. You don't believe that, do you, Abby? Well, I don't know what to believe. All I know is that the old man wants him. You're his father, Abby. You can't sacrifice him. Promise me that you won't take him to the office in the morning. Well, I... Don't tell Ira anything about it. Stand up to Hay like the man that you are. Or were. I'll try, Sally. Promise me, Abby. He's our son, Abby. Promise? I promise, darling. I promise. <laughs> Good morning, Jenkins. How are you on this beautiful morning? Jenkins, good morning. What's the matter, Jenkins? You got a grouch on? Where's that Irish smile of yours? Hey, look, Jenkins, don't let old man Hay catch you like this. You know how he likes all the guards to be cheerful. I'll see you later. I hope you're in a better mood. Good morning, Nancy. What's new at the reception desk? Nancy? Nancy, uh, what time do you have? My watch says 10 o'clock. Nancy, what's going into everyone this morning? Hey, for the love of... Where's my... Annie, who, who took my name off the door? Annie, I said, who took my name off the door? It was there last night when I left. Oh, no, not you too, Annie. I said good morning to Jenkins at the gate and to Nancy. Neither of them would answer me, but I didn't think that you, Annie, would... What the devil's going on here? All right, come in my private office. Sit down, Annie. You and I are going to have a little talk. Hey, who took down my Picasso print? Where's my silver inkwell? My electric humidor. I've had just about enough of this. I'm going to raise a stink. Annie, you take a memo. All right. To George Matulis, Office Services, from Abby Terrison, Vice President, Automotive Division. On my arrival here this morning... Well, are you getting it? What the devil is this note? If you have anything to dictate, Mr. Terrison, get a steno from the typing pool. All right, Annie. Why am I being given the silent treatment? Have you all been told that the skids are under me? Is this your idea of a practical joke? Is it April Fool's Day or something like that? Annie, please! For God's sake, answer me! I've got to know! Mr. Hay ordered it, didn't he? That's the only way it could happen. Right, Annie? Annie, can't you even nod your head? Don't just sit there as if I didn't even exist. You've worked for me for 15 years. I thought you were my friend. I thought you had some loyalty to me. Was I wrong? All right, listen. And listen well. And then you judge for yourself. Here is what L.O. Hay wants me to do. He wants me to get Ira to go to the Red Rapids Atomic Installation, where he'd most likely be killed by radiation exposure. That's Ira. Ira! He's always been like a nephew to you. Annie, you gave him presents for all his birthdays. You visited him when he was sick. So, I turned Mr. Hay down. I hated to, but I had to. Now, you understand, don't you? T tell me that I was right. Annie, please, we're here by ourselves. Hello, Hay speaking. Terrace, I've heard everything you said. And you said too much. Report to my office immediately.
How disloyal can you get, Harrison? Talk to a secretary about me behind my back, will you? Annie's more than a secretary. She's like a member of our family. Oh, really? Sally and I never had a celebration without inviting Annie. Now, to have her not talk to me... Proves that she's still a secretary. You see, Terrace and this girl knows that she's my employee, not yours. She knows that there is no power in you but that given you by the corporation. She's always been my friend. At your level, you cannot afford such illusions. The corporation made you and the corporation could break you. Just as easily as it can make and break your Annie, should she disobey my orders. There's just one difference. She realizes it, and you do not. Mr. Hayes, just yesterday you told me that my division was doing well. It is. Well, this morning I received treatment that is violent and demeaning, beyond reason. I determine what is beyond reason, not you. You think it's reasonable to have my subordinates disregard me? You don't care for it, eh? Well, definitely not. Well, neither do I. I told you I wanted your son Iyer in my office at 8 o'clock this morning ready to go to Red Rapids Atomic Installation. It's demeaning to me to have my orders ignored by my subordinates. But to strip my office... I took nothing that was yours. Nothing that the corporation hadn't given you in the first place. The Picasso print, the silver inkwell, the engraved nameplate, all company property, all symbols of the power L.O. Hay has given you to run your division. Now you know that without the corporation, you have no power. Well, it seems to me that... that L.O. Hay gives. L.O. Hay takes away. You are nothing without us. Am I right? Automotive is my division, Mr. Hay. I built it up. I made it profitable. Without us, you have no power to build it, to do anything. I can run any large organization. You wish to try. No, Mr. Hay, I didn't say that. Then what did you say? Well, what I meant was that... It... That you have ability? Ability without power is like an engine without fuel. Useless and futile. We give you the power, Mr. Terrison. I suggest that you acknowledge it. Unless you want it taken away from you permanently. Do you? Well, no. Then I... speak the truth clearly. Without the corporation, you have no authority to do anything. Show your absolute loyalty to the corporation. And when I say I want your son to clear up the Red Rapids mess, get him out here, fast. I was over 21. I can't make him take a job he doesn't want. You are over 21. But if I want you to do something, you do it. There is always a method of bending people to your will. But Red Rapids is not my responsibility. Anything the corporation assigns you is your responsibility. Certainly, if you can't run your own family, you cannot expect to be allowed to run a multi-million dollar enterprise. Now, are you going to tell Ira to be here tomorrow morning or not? I don't want my son to die, Mr. Hayes. We need Ira. We must have his services at whatever the cost, whatever the sacrifice. Is that clear, Terrison? He'll be here, Mr. Hay. And he'll go to Red Rapids. Even if I have to carry him. Yes, just a minute. Oh, hello, Pop. This is a surprise. I, uh, I was in the neighborhood on company business. I thought I'd drop in, take you out to lunch. Oh, come in. Well, thanks, Pop. Gee, I can't spare the time for an expense account lunch, but uh, you're welcome to half my liverwurst sandwich. Thanks, Ira. I'll stay, if you don't mind. There's something I'd like, I'd like to talk to you about. All right. What is it, Pop? Well, I, uh, I can't tell you what it is until you promise me to do it. Huh? And I don't want you to discuss it or even mention it to your mother. Well... Sounds pretty mysterious or ominous. But if it means that much, Pop, I have no choice. You could say no, Ira. Why should I say no? I might even want to do it, but... I imagine that you know I don't want to, or you wouldn't make me promise first. But really, Pop, if it's that important to you, count on me. Are you sure, Ira? Not even knowing of a blind promise? Look, Pop, I said I would. Now I uh, get to know the big secret? Well... You know, our advanced engineering division built the Red Rapids atomic installation. Mm. L.O. Hay wants you to make a special study. Why me? You're getting a reputation. Well, it's a good thing you made me promise first. I guess you know where Hay stands in my estimation. And how I hate to interrupt my work here. Uh, look, Ira, this is just a few weeks out. You can ask for all kinds of money. You'll get it. None of this university small change. Thousands. Why the high pay bit? Is he trying to corrupt me, something like that? No, no, not at all. They've been running into some unexplained radiation leakage down there, so 
This is the usual compensation for risk. Radiation leakage? That's right. Hay told you that? Yes, Ira. That's uh, one of the things that Hay thinks you can have some ideas about. And, Ira, please take care of yourself. I'll try, Pop. I'll try. Mr. Hay, Abby and Ira Terrison are here. Send them in. And Miss Randall. Call George Matulas. Cancel yesterday's orders and have Mr. Terrison's office restored. Yes, sir. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Morning, Mr. Hay. Good morning. So, Ira, you're going to join our team. Uh, my father asked me to do a special study for you. I promise to do it, and I will. Good. Good. Now, did he tell you that there... He explained uh... that there's a high risk of radiation and that pay is no object. Is that correct? That's what I told him, right, Abby? Yes, Mr. Hay. Then let me state my terms. 5000 a week with a minimum guarantee of six weeks, all payable before I start work. That's rather exorbitant, isn't it? Is it? You know what the risks are, and so do I. Perhaps you're used to buying lives cheaper, Mr. Hay, but uh, I set a somewhat higher value on my life. My father persuaded me to come. He's done his work, and I'll do the investigation if you'll meet my price. Abby? For a research physicist, your son is quite a businessman. I'll make out the check immediately. Pay to the order of Ira Terrison the sum of $30,000. Lawrence O. Hay. There. Terrison, I am proud of the way you came through for the corporation. I know it hasn't been easy for you to come to this decision. And, Abby, you should feel very proud of the love your son has for you. Uh, you do feel that way, don't you? I feel nothing. I merely did what you asked me to do. No, Abby, it isn't really that bad. Isn't it? Not at all. You know, Abby, I've watched you grow over the years. I knew that you had the makings of a great executive, but sometimes I thought you were a little too soft, perhaps lacked that absolute loyalty to L.O. Hay. Now I see that you don't. I'm not following you, Mr. Hay. Well, let's put it this way. There's nothing wrong with Red Rapids. No radiation leakage. Nothing. This was a test of your loyalty. And you came through. Why? Why? <laughs> As of tomorrow, Abby, I'm going to retire. And you are going to be president of the entire L.O. Hay Corporation. This is my tribute to your loyalty. And this is mine, Pop. This old buzzard's What's check that? for the 30,000 bucks endorsed over to you. I want no part of it. Now, don't be foolish, Ira. There's no danger. There, there, there never was any danger. I know that. I knew it yesterday when you asked me to do the work. Some of my closest buddies work at Red Rapids. I hear from them all the time. But you didn't know. You thought that I could get burned or be killed. No, no, Ira. I, I knew that you'd be careful. It, it seemed like a good opportunity for you. Face the truth, Pop. You were willing to have me die to keep in good with L.O. Hay. Well, this is where I leave. So long to both of you. You belong together. Ira. Ira! Easy, Abby. You get over it. <laughs> when you take over, you'll be able to do a lot for him. You'll sit in my chair, and all the power will be yours. Dangle a fat consultation fee, and he'll come crawling back to you. I hope he never does. I want my son to walk like a man, not like me. What you call loyalty, Mr. L.O. Hay, was fear. Sheer animal gut terror. I want no part of it. I don't want your chair or your power, your check or your job. Abby! I want my son. I want my son. <laughs> I want my son. <laughs> Theater 5 has presented The Sacrifice, written by Raphael David Blau and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Stotts Cotsworth, Maurice Tarplin, June Graham, Arlene Walker, and Jack Manning. 
Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Terry Ross. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.